Hello everyone, we are live. We are also only live on Facebook, sorry, on uh, YouTube and Twitch today as far as we know because there are issues with getting us live on Facebook. So uh, you've got us to yourselves, YouTube and Twitch people. Uh, I'm actually going to put the correct microphone on, the microphone I prefer to use on here because it lets me walk around the room. You see. There we go, there we go. So it's on this one now, it means I can go over here and you can still hear me like I was stood right next to you. The wonders of modern science, eh, folks? Welcome. It's Thursday Q&A Live with me, Phil Morse, here in the Digital DJ Tips studio. We are a few minutes late. Uh, apologies for that. I was uh, deep into trying to finish some very exciting content for our Digital DJ Lab program, which is uh, it's currently a dollar to get on Digital DJ Lab. Did you know that? So if you're not uh, already on Digital DJ Lab, give it a try. Head over to the uh, head over to the page and uh, have a go. Digital DJ Lab is our subscription program for people who've taken some of our courses but want to stay right up on top of how DJing is done today. And it's awesome. Anyway, I don't want to talk to you too much about that now because this is about you and your questions today. So if you are totally new to this, we're Digital DJ Tips. We're the leading online DJ school, and we are. Uh, we're kind of known for doing this twice a week. We do it on a Tuesday and a Thursday on our usual channels. Uh, however, not on Facebook this week for various reasons beyond our control. If you enjoy it as ever, hit that subscribe button, hit share, hit follow and like. So hello everyone. Uh, we've got loads and loads of people piling in here today. Uh, a few early hellos and then it's about questions. I want your questions. Maybe you've got questions about your DJ gear. We've got the Den and DJ Prime 2 in the studio here today, so we could answer questions about that. Maybe you've got questions about the Rain Go, sorry, the Rain Go, uh, the Rain 1, which is the new Rain device that we've uh, reviewed uh, in the last few days. It was released two days ago. Or whatever it is, ask those questions, and I'm here for as long as it takes to answer as many as I can. So to start off with, let's just say hello to um, all of our regulars. Hi to DJ Upstairs, uh, hi to Seda and Alfred, and DJ Vicar, hi to Saint Steve, uh, hello to Abraham. Uh, what's good, says Abraham. There's lots good, my friend. Uh, DJ99, uh, hello to Mastermind. Uh, to Blake, says, good morning, Phil and the Digital DJ Tips community. Hope you're doing fantastic. We are indeed, thank you, Blake. We are indeed. Hi to Scotty Dog, Tony in Bristol, UK. Uh, Papa D, good Thursday to you too, Papa D. Can you believe it's Thursday already? I certainly cannot. Hi to DJ Kluby and Queso. Uh, lovely as ever to see so many of our regulars here. Right, my first question. Do you think virtual DJ stems is a good feature to use on the Prime 4? Well, you can't, uh, is the simple answer to that. So stems is the technology that's built into virtual DJ and into Algorithms DJ Pro software that lets you live in real time separate the vocals from the harmonies and from the drums and the bass line in your music. Very clever technology. But unless it's built into the DJ system you're using, you can't use it. And the, the Prime systems, this is the Prime 2, but the Prime Go and the Prime 4 and the, D, uh, the SC5000 and 6000 are all similar to this. They all use Engine OS, which is what's making it look, uh, look like this. Uh, and Engine OS doesn't have stems built in, so you're never going to be able to use stems until such time as it does. Uh, and I'm not saying it ever will, but you know, at the moment you can't. Uh, so in the short answer to your question, Alfred, is you can't use uh, you can't use virtual DJ stems, unfortunately, on uh, the Prime gear at the moment or any other kind of live stems. Uh, so, uh, hi Vic from Belgium. Uh, DJ Gus says, do you think we are going to get a Prime 4 Mark II with built-in sampler and bigger jogs? So these are the two things that people miss on the Prime gear. We've got the Prime 2 here, but the Prime 4 has just got four decks. They miss a sampler because down here you've got all the stuff you normally get on pads, slicer and loops and rolls, but there's no sampler. Uh, so that's the first thing that people miss. And the second thing that people miss is having um, uh, like built-in bigger jogs or, or more, or more um, you know, motorized jogs, flasher jogs, basically. Uh, so do I think we're going to get a Mark II? Well, I think it's almost inevitable we're going to get a Mark II of all the Prime gear because what decent, successful DJ controller or DJ system has never had a, pro a, 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 um, a Mark II, right? Uh, and who knows? I have no inside information on that. Uh, but uh, interesting times. Uh, we'll see what comes along. Uh, Illusion loves stems. Yeah, stems are pretty cool. Uh, DJ Greyhound is sharing our excitement at the stuff the DJ community has to offer for 2021. By the way, if you entered our prize draw, we announced the big winners on Tuesday on Tuesday Tips Live. But tomorrow, hopefully, and Monday at the very latest, we'll be publishing on the blog post a full list of winners uh, from the prize draw, the $35,000 prize draw. 
So that's going to go on the website very soon. So if you're still wondering about whether you won something on there and you weren't one of the big prize winners that we announced on Tuesday, it's coming very soon. Uh, hello to Randall in Chicago. Uh, hello to uh, Roger in a very white and cold Estonia. It sounds white and cold already. Um, Scotty says, I got great help from Student Hub, which is the student group that you join when you go, when you join, well, you join here. Digital DJ Lab, for instance, but any of our courses. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And you're very welcome. That's what it's all about. Uh, Jason says, what's the best streaming software? Is OBS the best streaming software? OBS is brilliant, and that's what I would certainly recommend you start on because it's on all platforms, and it's free, so why not? We actually use software called Ecamm Live. That's what I'm kind of broadcasting to you on at the moment, which is Mac only, which is extremely good. But um, Try OBS to start with. There's no reason not to, and most people stick with it. So there you go. Uh, hello, Caliber in uh, in Cali. Uh, it's wet and wind, wet and rainy in Essex, says Stephen. So there we go. Uh, hello to Watson. Uh, how can I map the FX6 button to an empty button on a DDJ400? Says Seda. Well, uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what you're asking there. You can map most controls in Rekordbox onto empty buttons by going to the Rekordbox MIDI mapping feature. So if you do get stuck with that Seder, then just head over to Student Hub and ask a question and someone can help you with the, the particular thing you're trying to do there. Uh, hello to Carmelo. Uh, Rea says, Phil, do you think Serato is going to have stems anytime soon? Not that we've heard of, but I don't know if that's going to change. Uh, how do I know if YouTube will block my videos? How can I check? It's very, very simple. Head over to YouTube and upload a version of anything you want to do live. So let's say you want to do a live stream or do a mixed video, just put all the tunes you want to use onto a, a dummy video, any pictures, just all the tunes, uh, output them into some kind of dummy video and upload it to YouTube. And when you do that, YouTube will, and leave it unlisted. And when you do that, YouTube will tell you very quickly whether your tracks are going to get banned uh, because it will say either, it will say one of two things. It will either say, Copyrighted material has been detected. Uh, this is not a strike and your video is still live, which is what you want. Or it'll say uh, your video is uh, is not currently showing because uh, it's either muted or it's just not showing or something like that. So when it says that to you, you can then go and dig in and have a look at what went wrong. Uh, and when you, do, when you do that, you get a chance to see what tracks were causing the issue. And normally it is uh, one or two tracks in your mix that it will say, but, but causing it to be banned worldwide. So just don't use those mixes in your actual live broadcast or in your actual video. It's a bit of a pain, but it does work. And it's how you can make sure, or as sure as anyone can be, that when you go live, it's actually going to be going live um, and staying there when it's put on YouTube. So I hope that helps you. Um, this is Tuesday, Thursday Q&A Live. Uh, it's me, Phil, here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, and we're answering all your questions about your DJing. So please get those questions in. And if you're enjoying this, hit that love, hit that thumbs up, hit that smiley face. It matters to us. But even better, share this. That's the one that really counts. And, if, and you are, you're on YouTube at the moment, so you've got your YouTube sharing and on Twitch. Uh, no one on Facebook this week. Uh, so do subscribe, because then we can let you know when we do stuff like this in the future. Matthew says, any news as to when Mixcloud are going to update? Well, funnily enough, we're live on Mixcloud at the moment, and I notice they've just rolled out a bit of an update. Shall we have a look at it together? It's going to look weird because you're going to see me talking out of sync. Uh, but anyway, uh, this is what it looks like. So they've put at the top on Mixcloud uh, your resolution and your bit rate and your frame rate and your audio rate, which is new. I've noticed that's just been added. Hello to DJ LV2D there saying, even a, a hospital bed is not going to keep me away from the talk. So I hope you get well soon, my friend. Uh, so this is all new. So Mixcloud are always working on improving the way their system looks. So, um, so yeah, they've just changed a bit there. But I think, uh, you know, everyone's wanting Mixcloud to catch up with Twitch and Facebook and YouTube. But the thing is, those platforms have been there for many years. Mixcloud's only had its streaming for a little while. So give them a bit of slack. Uh, the uh, next question down here is from JH, who says... I started DJ three years ago on the DDJ 400. I've tried the CDJ 2000 setup. What do you think uh, the ground is to use full size decks at home? Should I wait to see what 2021 has? I don't think you need to use full size decks at home. Some people love doing that, but unless you've got a lot of money, you know, a DDJ 1000, if you're a Pioneer user, is a lovely 
device to have at home. It's got a full-size mixer, full-size jog wheels, and it costs a third of the price of buying a full setup. So that's what I would do. I, I wouldn't have a full setup at home. Uh, okay, so what's the easiest way to hook up external hardware like a Roland Boutique TBO3 to Rekordbox DJ? It's a good question. I'm not gonna pretend to have an answer on the tip of my tongue about that. So I would ask that in Student Hub and you're gonna get answers there from people who've done that. Okay, so. Hi Mixmaster G, thank you for your tips and advice to me earlier. Always enjoy your emails. Uh, Lee says, do you think there'll be an update to Pioneer DDJ-1000 in the near future? I don't know, the DDJ-1000 is a very, very popular controller. So I'd expect a Mark II at some point, but you know, it's not really out of date. Everything it does, it does as well as it did when it was launched. Uh, so in truth, I don't have a uh, idea there. Hello Mark on Twitch, good to have some Twitch uh, comments coming through here. We are not live on Facebook today, unfortunately. There is an issue with Facebook that means we can't go live there today. Our full service will be resumed next week. Uh, uh, DJ Caliber, can someone go over to Pioneer and kick them up the ass so they can finally make a controller to replace the DJ 1000? Well, again, why? It works brilliantly. It's a lovely controller. You know, if it ain't broke. Um, so, uh, Northwest Audio event DJ says, hey, regarding the census and the prize draw, if we're watching, we're all winners. That's a very nice, kind thing for you to say. Uh, Blake says, do you think Pioneer DJ is gonna come out with standalones and gear to complete directly with the Prime gear, which is the gear we have here in the studio today? Uh, I think almost certainly they're gonna make gear which will compete with this. You know, the CDJ 3000s, I've actually got one here, the CDJ 3000. These uh, CDJ 3000 decks are full of the kind of technology that you're gonna find in Pioneer's version of this. Because the technology in the CDJ 3000s is the same stuff that they're gonna be introducing in their standalone stuff. They've now done it, they've got it, it's in the CDJ 3000s. So yes, in answer to your question, I think they will be coming. I would expect that to come sometime this year or early next year, uh, but we don't know anything uh, more than you do. It's just me kind of knowing how the industry rolls. So yes, I do think it's gonna come soon. Uh, it's me though says what studio or action cam to use to record your set phones don't work for me so the one i use i've actually got down here in my udg camo bag which i'll pull out for you and show you uh, the one i use is called a mevo cam and the reason i use these here it is is that it doesn't need you screw a tripod on the bottom there is it doesn't need a computer that will go live directly onto uh, the internet, onto YouTube, Twitch, Mixcloud, wherever, it will go live on there without a computer, which I find brilliant, uh, because when I'm live streaming, I've got my backpack, I'm not at work, I don't want to carry a computer with me, it just reminds me of being at work, no offence to work, uh, and it just allows me to go live straight away really quickly, uh, and then you control it on your phone, you control where the camera is and all that stuff, uh, it's really clever, uh, so that's called Mevo, M-E-V-O. However, other good cams, GoPros can work. You've got to get an uh, a adapter to plug a GoPro into a computer though. Uh, I'm a real fan of the Logitech, and I've, again, I've got some here. I'll just see if I can find them quickly for you. Uh, the Logitech, the latest versions of the Logitech webcams. Unfortunately, I don't think they're within easy view of where I'm stood for me to pull one out for you. Uh, but Logitech have uh, these new ones, I can't remember what they're called, but if you, you'll know it when you're searching for them because it looks like they've got carpet on the front uh, and they're brilliant. They're really good picture quality. There's a nice little app called Logitech Capture, I think, which lets you have a lot of control over them as you're setting them up. Uh, so they're very good as well. And I bought them because they've got USB-C plugs. So they plug straight into a Mac without needing a wobbly adapter and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so uh, I hope that helps. Should I start with the DDJ400? Yes, DDJ400, a wonderful controller to start with. Um, definitely a good one. And you'll probably end up keeping it as your second controller uh, when you upgrade later down the line. Um, how do you get the live stream audio without microphone to your mix cloud? Not sure what you mean there. How do you get the live stream audio without microphone to your mix cloud? No, I'm not understanding that train wreck. You need to tell me a little bit more. We've got someone in Orkney here. I think it's the first time we've had someone in Orkney. Hello, Offside Logic, uh, who says, I'm a newish listener. Uh, I'm enjoying the show. He's just made it. We only made it because we're late. So we're normally here at uh, the top of the hour, but we went live at the bottom of the hour because I'm not going to lie, I forgot. I was so uh, busy editing a video. We just made a video using this. Uh, showing you how to use uh, our new fuzzy key mixing system. Uh, I was using the key mixing here. 
on the Prime 2 to demonstrate it. Uh, so we just published a blog post today with a new way of key mixing that means you can mix anything into anything. It means you don't have to worry about whether your next song is going to be in the right key to mix, but without using KeySync because KeySync is lame. KeySync will give you horrible results that sound like chipmunks or that sound horrible. Uh, but there is a way to make sure that every track will sound great and every track will mix with every other track in key. How do we do it? Well, you can find out on the Digital DJ Tips website. We've just published the post today. So head over to the fuzzy key mixing post on Digital DJ Tips where I explain all. And you Digital DJ uh, Lab members have got a treat coming because I've made some videos explaining it all and that's what I was finishing off just then before I went live and uh, why I overran. Uh, so go and have a look at that. It's called Fuzzy Key Mixing and we're pretty excited to, to share that with the DJ world because it's uh, kind of like sorts out something that's been an issue for people wanting to do this kind of stuff in the past and finding the results vary quite a lot. Basically key sync is broken on all DJ software. The only people who get it right are Pioneer on the CDJ 3000s uh, uh, and there, their key sync works in the way that I describe in that fuzzy key mixing article I just showed you. So there we go. Vinny. Hello, Vinny. I don't have any baggage or legacy equipment, so I'm building a fresh setup. I'm not looking to go to any clubs, just pubs and small venues. In other words, you're taking your gear with you, right? I'm thinking of getting a Prime Go and Bose Pro L132. Uh, thoughts, please. Well, the Prime Go is a wonderful device. Here's mine on the floor next to me because I pulled it out of my bag earlier. Uh, and this is a deck saver cover. By the way, any DJ gear, get yourselves a deck saver cover. Uh, they just control, uh, they, just, they just protect all those controls, all those knobs and buttons. You know, if you're gonna pay a lot of money on gear, get one of those, they're brilliant. Uh, and it will just mean you're not gonna end up with a bent cross radio or whatever. I can thoroughly recommend the Prime Go. It's a lovely controller uh, or lovely DJ system. Uh, if not, then, if you want to go down that route, the standalone route, Denon, Denon, especially if you're never going to play in clubs, is a great way of going because they're reasonably well priced and they've got great features. Uh, this one, the Prime 2. It's probably a little bit better, the Prime 2, because it's just more fun to DJ on. You know, those of us who've DJed on all kinds of gear, we appreciate the Prime Go because of how small it is and how we can put it in a backpack and stuff. But really, if you want the, the feel, the, the, the general feel of what DJing's like, I'd say this is better. It's got better job uh, It's got more control. It's the same size screen, actually. But, you know, if I wanted, if I had to have one DJ system, I'd probably go for a bigger one, something like this, just because it'll be more fun in the long run to play on. And it's still portable enough to carry around with you. Uh, but if you are kind of like hell-bent on something a, a bit more portable, Prime Go is brilliant. Uh, but you were thinking along the right lines there, Vinny. Uh, DJ Long says, uh, Long G says, Hi Phil, do you think Rekordbox will launch the same AI like Virtual DJ this year where you can remove the vocals and stuff? I don't know. We don't have any, any word on that. I mean, if, if it catches on, it's definitely going to be the future, right? Uh, DJ Easy Promo TV says, Phil, what's the name of your laptop stand? This one here. Uh, I need to know. Uh, my team will give you a link in the comments when they spot this comment from you. Uh, DJ Easy Promo TV. They'll give you a link directly to it on Amazon. I, I cannot tell you the name of that link because it's all letters and numbers and stuff. But the team answer this all the time, so they'll let you know there. Um, apparently, Mixcloud, Mixcloud's live went out of beta today. Wow, good. That's why we've got those new features and stuff, I guess. So thank you for that, DJ Brent. Uh, Gregor says, Hi, Phil. I upgraded from the DDJ 800 to the XDJ XZ or XZ and I've noticed the pitch sliders are slightly different and don't have the click in the middle. Uh, any reason for this? I miss having the click. Don't worry about it because what happens is, let's have a look on this controller here, on this system here. What happens in the middle here is, right, you can see in the middle there, there's a light lit, isn't there? And that light means you're central. That's, that light is the same as a click, but there's no click on this one either. So you might think, well, hang on a second, the click means I know I'm on naught. I can just quickly go there and know I'm on naught. But what happens is, and you'll find this very hard to see here, but what happens is, where it's showing you the speed, when you get to naught, there's an area right there in the middle where I'm moving the fader, but the pitch isn't changing because there's a, there's a little area where, whereas with the rest of it, the pitch changes all the time as you're moving it. There's just that little bit in the middle. The easiest way to look at it is to watch the, See the expanding and shrinking waveforms, right? Watch those waveforms as I go to the middle. And I'll say when I'm in the middle, you see they're getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm in the middle 
now. See, they stayed the same there. They stayed the same. Now they've started moving again. All that time I was moving the pitch fader. But in that middle bit, there's that kind of grace area there, there, where I can move the fader up and down and these don't move. And that is the same as your central click. So even though it doesn't click, it does the same thing. And I'm almost certain on the XDJ XZ or XZ, it's going to be exactly the same. So while you might miss it, have a look at that. And that might put your mind at rest that you've still got that area where you know you're at naught. Uh, and it's all, it's all how it would have been had you clicked it into place. Should we expect anything exciting from Denon again soon, says DJ Fuzz. I think we can always expect exciting things from Denon. They're fast at developing clever stuff, aren't they? Uh, so the answer to that is probably yes. Um, DJ Chainwreck, I've only managed to get the recording with me on the microphone in the recording. It's why I ask, oh, you're trying to DJ live stream, right? Man, it's hard to explain how to get your music into a DJ live stream here. Uh, we have got articles on it. Just go to digitaldjtips.com and I'll show you where, where you can find out an article that's going to help you with that. So head over to digitaldjtips.com, click the little magnifying glass in the top corner and then type in DJ live streaming. And you'll come across lots and lots and lots of articles. Uh, and in these articles, and there's a broken one there, I'll have to open that one now and find out why that's broken. Uh, you'll find lots and lots of articles in here and one of them is called How to Get Your Sound Right at Gigs. So uh, when you find the sound one, you might have to go back a page or two to find it because we've got lots and lots of live streaming stuff. Uh, you'll find an article that will say uh, getting your audio correct. Uh, and when you do, I'm just trying to find it for you now, but uh, we have really published an awful lot on live streaming recently, haven't we? Uh, I'm just trying to find it for you now. It's called Two Ways to Get Your Audio Right. Maybe because I'm live and trying to talk to you guys and look at the same time. Uh, let's just search for live streaming audio. That might be the better search. There we go. Two ways to get great live, great sounding audio on your live streams. There it is. Uh, go and have a look at that and this will show you all the ways to get your music into your DJ live stream. So, you know, I, it's something I can't explain to you now, but the article will tell you everything you need to know about that. Uh, Pioneer or Denon, says Vinny. It's, there's no answer to that. Uh, they're both great. Just depends on what you want. Uh, if, or if you want to play in clubs, Pioneer. If you're happy to take your own gear with you or you never want to play in clubs, probably Denon at the moment. So, uh, Carmelo says, I'm very interested in collaborative DJ streaming. Streaming with another DJ at the same time, swapping over sets and mixing into each other's sets. Any developments with tech to make this happen? There are, but they're all kind of prototypes at the moment, and we're trying to review one at the moment, but we're struggling to get the equipment we need from the developer. So keep an eye on Digital DJ Tips, and we'll tell you more about how you can do that soon. Can you use a hub with the Rain One for four channels? Is it coming? Uh, so yes, you can, but the Rain One's only got two faders. It's only got two um, mixers. So in theory you can, but in practice, no, because you've only got two, you've only got two um, faders to mix things in and out with. Uh, for Goot says, Phil, the other day I found a German manufacturer of DJ workstations called Hoaboard. They look cool, have you seen them? How important do you think this is for your image when live streaming? Uh, that's a great find. Thank you for that. I'm going to scribble it down, my trusty pen on my pad, and have a look at those. Uh, so in answer to your question, I think the way your live streams look is extremely important. You look at the best YouTubers. You look at the best uh, DJ live streams from people like Defected and James Hype and so on. You know, James is, is, is James makes the rough and readiness of his live streams kind of part of the fun of them, but that's that's deliberate. That's not accidental. And of course, when James goes out and about live streaming, it all looks extremely good. Uh, and yeah, you look at anyone who's taken this seriously and they've made, they've made a real effort with the way their streams look. So yes, I think it is very, very important to have your live streams looking good. Uh, the, way, the way I like to do it is by having um, a nice background. So my live streaming right at the beginning, I thought, you know what, I'm always going to have a stunning backdrop to any live stream I do. Uh, and um, so you do need that kind of USP. And you do need some way of making your live streams look good. And having great studio furniture is definitely a way to do that. So um, I'll have a look at that uh, manufacturer of workstations. Uh, and yes, I agree with you, Fergu. It is important to make your live streams look good. Look, even if you haven't got, excuse me, if you haven't got an amazing uh, room or place or view or whatever, just get a green screen. They're not expensive. 
A green screen is, is literally a green screen that pulls down behind you and you can tell your broadcast software to put any picture you want on the background. Here in the Digital DJ Tip Studio, we do it like this, right? It looks like I'm in a TV studio. Um, you know, we have this here. <laughs> and then we've got the gear and then we've got the overhead shot. It's all very clean, deliberately. Uh, but actually, as you can tell from this shot here, it's just a tiny room uh, and it's a tiny room deliberately. So it's nice dead, the sound's dead, there's no echoing and stuff. This is just a wall uh, and there's even a corner in the wall, right? You can see when, it, when it's not how you're meant to see it, it's horrible. It's full of shadows and wires and stuff, but we've taken the time to set up our tiny little room so that it looks really good and you can do the same. You can use a green screen or just use clever lighting. So our lighting in here, which would be harder to show you actually, but you can see here, uh, we've got a light here, there's another light just here, and there's a light in front of me that's making, you know, without that, it looks horrible. There we go, now it looks all right because I've got the window open, but if I close the window, and I should have had the window closed really to keep the light constant in here, you know, without that, it's awful. Uh, so just little lights that don't cost very much can make a really big difference to the way everything looks. And now with the window closed, I need that light a little bit brighter. There we go. Um, so yeah, I hope that's, uh, let's get that camera up again. See, this is all live. You know this is live, don't you folks? Uh, so yeah, just spend a little time on how your live streams or your, your, your recorded DJ sets look. Uh, let me just, I am a sticker for getting this stuff looking right. Uh, Nahavo says, I just sold my CDJ1000 setup for a DDJ800 controller. Was this a good idea? Uh, you know, there's no answer to that question. It's up to you. I mean, an 800 is a lovely controller. It's a lot more portable. You probably made a bit of money on the deal. So uh, a lot of people, the 800 would be the pinnacle of what they wanted out of DJing. So yeah, it's, it's all right. Um, Jared, this is a great one. How difficult is it to switch platforms? I'm a tractor DJ, but the Rain one has me seriously thinking about going over to Serato. I think you should try Serato on a much cheaper controller. Get a secondhand Serato controller. Even get yourself one of these for like $60, $70, it's a little Newmark um, DJ to go to touch uh, and see if you like Serato. If you do, then you can spend the 1,500 on a Rain 1, but you certainly don't want to make an expensive mistake there if Serato isn't for you. You know, a lot of people get very attached to their software uh, and it's not an easy job moving from one to the other, although you can use something like the DJ conversion utility uh, to change your cue points and your playlists and so on from one system to another, which does make it a bit easier. But I always say changing your software is like changing your partner. It's not something you go into lightly. So, uh, do you think there will ever be any time signatures other than 4-4, four, four, says Jonas? Would it be cool, for instance, to be able to beat grid 3-4? Right, well, there are, of course, lots of time signatures for music out there. 4-4 four, four is dance music, people. So if you don't know about music and time signatures, 4-4, four, four, if you're dancing away to dance music, like you go one, two, three, four. Let's get a piece of music playing and talk about it. So here we go. Just trying to jump forward in this track. Ah, of course, I'm on the uh, Prime 4. That is called 4-4 four, four music uh, because it's got that one, two, three, four beat. So three, four music is like a waltz. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You know, all this formal dancing stuff. So. You, you know, you don't DJ that kind of music. So I don't think we'll ever see beat gridding and stuff doing that. Uh, but there are some clever time signatures that are used in music. There are producers who deliberately try and subvert things by messing around with the time signatures. What you hear more often in dance music is what's called triads. And that's the, when they have three notes going within the four. So it's do 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 So you still get the four notes, but they've got these little triplets, these little threes. And it's used a lot in EDM and stuff just to change the rhythm up. You can immediately tell when a track has got that kind of rhythm. Laid back Luke is bang into that stuff. It's still within the 4-4, but it's just these, these triplets, these kind of like sets of three notes. So um, a really interesting question. Thanks for that, Jonas. If you have just joined us, this is Digital DJ Tips, the leading online DJ school. I'm Phil Morse, and we're doing our live Thursday Q&A where we just talk and talk and talk about DJing and everyone asks questions in the comments. We're only on Facebook, on YouTube and Twitch today because Facebook has not gone live for some reason on our system, uh, but hopefully we'll be back 
on Facebook next week. Uh, but thank you very much for everyone joining, joining us. There are hundreds of people here today, so it's, you know we always love that. We're always very grateful for you for joining us. And if you enjoy this, subscribe to the channel on YouTube, but also just share it, tell other people about it, like it, uh, and that helps us to do this stuff. Right, so let's move on then. And please just punch those social like buttons. I want to know that you're enjoying this and I get to see them here. So uh, do that for me. I would appreciate it. Uh, I had the Rock the Dance Floor book for Christmas. I'm loving it so far. Very helpful. Oh, someone was very tasteful buying you the Rock the Dance Floor book for Christmas, weren't they? This is our book on how to DJ. Uh, it's the number one best selling book on Amazon in that category. Uh, and uh, it's also an audio book and it's also a Kindle book and from all good bookstores. So if you want to know uh, the way we teach DJing, go and grab a copy of Rock the Dance Floor. And if you want a free copy, just go there and I'll give you a PDF free copy of Rock the Dance Floor. And let me show you something now that I'm not allowed to show you because it's not quite ready, but I'm going to show you anyway. We have recently put the whole book on the Digital DJ Tips website. Here we go. This is the full Rock the Dance Floor book on our website. Uh, this is literally every chapter, all indexed, all in here, all the videos, everything. Uh, because normally in the book, you had to go off somewhere else to find the videos and stuff. Uh, but this is all in here, ready for you to learn from. Uh, so you can actually get on our website now and read the whole book as well. Now I say you can, uh, unless you were very clever there and you looked at the top of the screen at the URL, you can't because it's not actually live on the website yet, but it will be very, very soon. So I'll be announcing that in the next few days. Uh, so a big shout out to my team for making that possible. You know, we want to share this information because we want as many people DJing as possible. So while we love it when people buy the book, we also want you to have it, which is why we give it away when you join Digital DJ Tips for free and why we're putting it on our website as well. What we find is a lot of people will read it on the website or on the PDF and then they'll go and buy the book because they want a copy of it. So, uh, so thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed the, the book as your Christmas present. It's always touching to know that people are um, buying my book for, for presents and stuff. Um, have you got any info on MWM Phase and Serato, says DJ Val Pacino. Uh, no, you know, they've been promising that for one whole year now, uh, but no, we don't have any information on that, I'm afraid. Uh, lots of you giving love for Mixcloud in the comments, which is nice, we love Mixcloud too. Uh, let's get one or two more of these that are a little bit different. When will we have a new tractor controller, says Riri. Uh, I'm a tractor fan, but I really want a new model and software improvement. I don't think that's gonna happen uh, any time soon. I just don't, unfortunately, so I don't, wouldn't hold your breath. Uh, so uh, I think the reason some people are down on the DDJ1000, SRT at least, is because as great a controller it is, its, foot paste, its footprint is based on the record box, i.e. no Serato effects. Well, there's no record box effects either. That's the thing. The whole point about the 1000 controllers is they've got club effects, hardware effects built in. Uh, so there's no record box effects. Record box has got the same kind of effects that Serato does, but you can't control those either. So it's, it's an either or. If you want a controller that controls the software effects as they're built into the software for record box or for Serato, for record box, you need to buy um, a DDJ R. X, for instance, RX2, I think they got to, um, and Serato and SX3, that'll give you those controls. Uh, but the 1000 is meant to feel like club gear, and that means you've got club effects and not software effects. That's the reason for that. Uh, the lack of tractor controllers is undercutting the platform, says Mixmaster G. Yep, but, uh, but there we go. Uh, Scotty Dog has noticed that you can have no more than 200 letters in a question. Well, it would fill my screen fully, wouldn't it, if there were uh, if there are essays in our questions. So that is, uh, that's pretty good for me, I have to say. Hi, Disco Worm over there in San Francisco. Um, how long would you expect a complete novice to be able to create and uh, a 30 minute DJ set, which would sound okay? I'm not sure, uh, but I think I'm not progressing as fast as I like. I've been doing it two months. Right, Andy, get this, because that's gonna help you get it right. I think a complete novice to do a, th a 30 minute set, three to six months. So um, if you haven't got the book, just get the book as a starting point to get this stuff right. Um, yeah, three to six months. So you're not quite there yet, Andy, stick with it. Remember, we've got courses that can help you on this, but uh, this isn't the day to talk about those. They're all on the courses page on Digital DJ Tips if you wanna know more. Hi, Bolt Shark. Always uh, nice to see your name popping up in my, in my chat. Um, lots of love for Denon here as well. Uh, I remember the DN2000 as well, Hugh. It was a great little device. 
Uh, Tony says, how can you get an audio signal in an OBS stream through the DDJ-1000 playing, playing or mixing physical vinyl? You'll have to take it from the back of the DDJ-1000 and use an audio interface uh, to get that in there, I would say. Phil loves that little Prime Go. I do, because it fits in my backpack. It means I can go anywhere with it. Um, I've noticed there were no African people that won any prizes in the census, says Harvey. Just European, Australian and US winners. We haven't announced the census winners yet. We only announced the like 15 people who won the big prizes. So uh, I would say wait till we announce them all. I'm sure there's winners from all over the world in there when you see the full list. Uh, Harvey. Um, Herbert says my stems buttons do not work in virtual DJ since my last Windows update. Is there a setting in systems that needs to be turned on? I uh, would say you should go and ask Virtual DJ that because I don't know myself. Or just go and ask in Student Hub. Some of them might be able to help you over there. Um, um, one piece of one thing I'd like to ask everyone to do is only post your question once, please. It just means I'm scrolling through the same thing again and again, and it means I struggle to find new questions to ask. Don't ask your questions more than once. I'd appreciate that. Uh, is it a waste of money to get a professional setup rather than a controller if you just want a DJ? Mm, yeah, probably. Controllers are brilliant. You don't need to go much further than a controller nowadays. Uh, Dave says, hi, Phil. Can you recommend any video software when using the Prime 4? I'm looking at Virtual DJ and Serato, but this seems to be it. Am I missing something? Well, you can't use the Prime 4 as a video controller. You have to use DJ software if you want to DJ with videos. Uh, luckily, the Prime 4 works with Serato and Virtual DJ, both of which have video plugins. So either of those, and no, there is no other. So they're the two that you should be using. Best controller under $450, DDJ SB3 for Serato, DDJ 400 for, for uh, Recordbox, or the Mixtrack uh, Pro FX or Platinum FX, uh, all under 450, all great controllers. Uh, so the pitch fader click is actually a con, says the Ruckus. So there you go. Well, don't know about that. I had a click on my Technics and I wouldn't call it a con there, but um, I know where you're coming from. Thank you for that. Let's do half a dozen more of these then. Um, I noticed when you move the pitch to the middle, the light on the left of it lit up, Carmelo. Yeah, that's true. That's exactly what happens. So let's look again while we're talking about pitch controls. So here, that light in the middle is your way of knowing that when the light is on, the pitch is at zero. Even though my hand's moving, see my hand's moving? As long as that light stays on, the pitch is at zero. So it's like a click. The light replaces the click. So that's exactly what happens there, Carmelo. What can we use to make beats on an iPad? Someone help Vic out over there on YouTube. Uh, loads of, there's loads and loads of things you can use for that. Uh, answer Vic on YouTube, please, in the comments. Um, I play on a knackered set of vinyl turntables and I feel the pain of the 0% click. Yeah, God, on old turntables, you get to the click and it jumps eight BPMs or something, doesn't it? They're terrible. Um, mine used to do that. Uh, the Denon gear looks so smart and suitable. And, uh, the Den and Go looks so smart and suitable and always spoken of fondly. What about Recordbox? There's nothing like this for software at the moment. You know, Recordbox um, controllers, as in standalone controllers, there's no smaller ones right now. I'm sure they're coming at some point, but, uh, but yeah, nothing at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to pull one or two more of these out. DJ Mike says, hi, Phil, hope you're well. How do you feel about NAM being open to all? Do you think this will make companies bring out all the stops? Well, it's not, it's, NAM's not on at all this year. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, it's just not open at all uh, or would be there. So I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, Phil, I'm enjoying your, your book. Uh, great tips, but you've made me so much work thinning down my music library. I'm looking forward to a more concise collection, though. Um, 35,000 before, closer to 25,000 now. Get it down to 2,000, Toby. You'll thank me for it, my man. Uh, are the articles free to read or do I need to be a student? Uh, no, you don't need to be a student. I think you were probably talking about the article on our fuzzy key mixing, right? Uh, this one here. Uh, no, it's not uh, only students. Just head to digitaldjtips.com. If you want to get the videos of me demonstrating this and showing you this in full, then that's in Digital DJ Lab which is our program for DJs, our monthly program for DJs. Uh, go there, try lab that you can see on the screen now. Uh, and you can try it for a, a dollar. Uh, it's brilliant, Digital DJ Lab. Uh, it's got several um, things I'm not gonna go into now, but just trust me, it's brilliant. You try it for a dollar right now. So just go there and have a go. If you don't like it, cancel it. Um, but yeah, that's where we kind of go into more detail on this stuff. But the articles we write that describe these things are all for free. 
Uh, and uh, so I hope that helps. I'm going to do two or three more questions. Uh, this is uh, from lots of you giving, giving advice on uh, live streaming, which is great. So go get that in the comments about lighting and about practicing and so on. Um, so good to hear that. Um, Sean says, what lighting are you using for live streams? I need to sort this out for mine. Right, so here we have a big, uh, a big light with a big, you know, I don't know what they call them, but the big, the big diffuser on the front of it, um, which gives that very flat light. So if you see in my, see here, that looks very flat, doesn't it? There's no shadows and the lights. Now you can see in my glasses, if I go like that, a reflection of it. It's a big, big light. Um, that's, that's how we get that flat light. Uh, and you can buy lights like this for not very much money for indoors. For outdoors, we use, um, we use a very small light. I'll show you actually what we use for outdoors. So for outdoors, we have this light here and we mount it on a mount like this. The tripod screws on the bottom here and that little camera I showed you goes there. This goes in like this. This light is extremely bright. Uh, that's set to, seems to be set to red at the moment, uh, but that light's extremely bright. And what that does is, if we've got a bright background, it just gives a bit of light on, on me and, and, and what's going on in the foreground, stops you being in shadow. It's like, you know, if you use a flash gun, if you're taking a picture with the sun behind someone to make sure you don't get them all just black, like a shadow. Um, and that's what this does. So on our live streams, we use this. We use natural light for everything, but this is just as a kind of a pin light uh, to make sure that uh, what's going on immediately in front of the camera isn't, isn't, uh, isn't kind of blotted out because we often have a very bright background. So I hope that kind of gives you some ideas there. But lighting is one of those things you can play with forever uh, and still learn something. The Ruckus says, I'm a Serato head, but since I bought the DDJ 1000, I had to convert. I took the Record Box Made Easy course, thank you for that. Uh, and I was and am still amazed at some of the unique features. So there we go. Um, DJ Trainwreck says, in your opinion, Phil, do you see Newmark as a steady competitor gear wise uh, in comparison to Pioneer Denon, etc.? Newmark is a consumer brand. Newmark will never make stuff that is aimed at professionals, not anymore anyway. Now that the company that owns Newmark also owns Denon, Denon is the pro brand in that range. But Newmark's consumer gear is brilliant. So there's nothing wrong with Newmark gear, uh, but it will never be competing with Pioneer and Denon because it's not meant to be competing with Pioneer and Denon, basically. Um, People are asking about whether the stuff you can find in Digital DJ Lab is, is uh, available elsewhere. No, everything in the lab has been filmed specially for it and none of it is available anywhere elsewhere. Guys, shall we just have a little look inside Digital DJ Lab? I don't mind showing it to you. Um, this is uh, probably a good time to do this because we're on the dollar free, free trial for a month for a dollar. So Digital DJ Lab, uh, I'll load it on the screen now and we will just have a little look into it together. So when you uh, sign up for our any of our courses, you get this page here. Uh, and Digital DJ Lab is one of the ones that I am in, being the owner of the company. So in Digital DJ Lab, you have mixed deconstructions, action plans, bonuses, pro members and community. So I'll talk you through the actual content. So the mixed deconstructions are what you're seeing here. So this is where we take mixes by big, big DJs and we break them down and show you how to do them. Uh, and we've got mixes by some of the biggest names in DJing here. So for instance, here's a Jazzy Jeff one where you get a lesson, you get demos, you get uh, everything you need to do this. And if I drill into an individual lesson, you can see here that we've got track listings and so on. Uh, we've got sheets, info sheets that'll help you to, to, to nail the skills. Uh, and then there are comments underneath where you can get to ask the tutors how you can do whatever the lesson is about. So there's, there's, uh, there's 80 of these, 80 of these mixed deconstructions. There's enough to keep you learning new mixed skills for years there alone. But there's also action plans. And action plans are like mini courses. Action plans will teach you stuff that you can do like live streaming, DJ edits, beat gridding, uh, how to look after your music, how to use, um, how to beat mix, how to, you know, this is all stuff that is over and on, on top of what's in our courses, acapellas, looping mastery, quick mixing, pro key mixing, uh, pro effects, a super simple hot cue system, a key shift smart crate system. This is a great one. This is a way of uh, getting smart crates so that you've always got stuff to play in key. Um, so this is stuff over and above what we teach in our courses. And again, 
you get these sheets to download so that will help you to, to work out how to figure out how it's done uh, and you get help from me underneath the lessons so that um, so that if you've got any questions about it you can you can get help uh, digital dj lab is a great thing to have on top of dj courses it doesn't replace dj courses because it goes deeper and it goes further than the stuff that we would teach in a course uh, so if you've bought any of our dj courses and you just want to keep up to speed on what's going on in djing have a look at Digital DJ Lab. And the other stuff, you get lots of bonus material and stuff in here, but there's also a pro area that teaches you more about promoting yourself, marketing yourself, and so on. Uh, so if you're a pro, you're gonna to wanna to upgrade and have this version of Digital DJ Lab as well. Uh, and here's uh, where you find replays of webinars and coaching calls and stuff that we put into the lab too. So I didn't mean to do that today, but I thought it'd be nice to show you that because uh, you know it is a dollar at the moment to get into lab and it isn't normally that cheap. There's where to find out about it he said holding his hands up leaving myself hanging there uh, go to djtips.co slash try lab i'm going to answer two more questions and then i have to go folks um if youtube or twitch license the music thanks to their platforms would it be the end of mixcloud mixcloud live streaming might struggle but of course mixcloud is a mixtape platform as well it's where you can upload audio uh, forever kind of stuff so but yes i think if that happened you would find that there'd be a a lot fewer people on Mixcloud because Mixcloud is fully legal and Twitch, YouTube, Facebook aren't, of course. Uh, I'd like to see a Rain 4, says Carmelo. That'd be a four channel version of the Rain 1, right? Uh, yep, yeah, I think that would be really, really nice. Um, so uh, apparently there is 3-4 dance music. Uh, apparently Polly Ridden by Phonon is 3-4 for all you dubstep fans. Uh, so that's uh, great to know and I always like to be corrected by people. Uh, and DJ Kurt, when will you be announcing the prizes from the survey? We announced the big prize winners on Tuesday in Tuesday Tips Live, and I'll be publishing the full list of winners either tomorrow or Monday. Uh, so you'll know if you've won one of the other prizes then. I'm going to have to leave it here, people, because, uh, because we're reaching the end of the time we've got uh, for today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'll be back on Tuesday at the same time, a bit earlier, actually. So look at your watch now take an hour and 20 minutes off. That's when I'll be live on Tuesday with our Tuesday Tips Live. And a little birdie tells me we might have some new DJ gear to talk about on Tuesday. Uh, and then I'll be back this time on Thursday for another Thursday Q&A, or actually earlier. So again, take an hour and 20 minutes off whatever your watch says now. That's when we'll be back for that. Join Steve for a Bumpy House In My House live stream special on Sunday. Steve Canuetto, our Scratch DJ, will be playing house music. And that is Look At Your Watch, 15 minutes earlier than your watch says right now uh, on uh, YouTube, Twitch, and on Mixcloud Live. So the same channels you're watching this on now. Uh, and that's it for our live shows coming up. Remember to go and have a look at the uh, the fuzzy live streaming system that we've been talking to you about today. Uh, sorry, the it's not called the fuzzy live streaming system at all. I'm getting my words muddled up. Uh, the fuzzy key mixing system, the new way of key mixing so you can mix anything into anything that we've just literally announced today. Uh, and we've put it all on the website how you can do this. So go to Digital DJ Tips and click on fuzzy key mixing to learn that. And if you're a Digital DJ Lab member, your action plan that goes into a lot more detail detail on how to do this is dropping in the next few days. I'm just finishing working on it now. Uh, and if you want to try the lab one more time, go to djtips.co slash try lab. Right, get good, get out there. If you can't get out there, stay safe. Make the moments, people, and I'll see you again very soon here on another live stream. Till then, bye-bye.